So first, tell me what we mean when we say toxic stress. Well, that, that's a great question, Casey. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a very important one to think about where to draw the line because we've known, as, as Nancy was alluding to, that you know, for, for a century uh, from experiments and the follow-up of children that were truly deprived and had, had very serious kinds of deprivation that their outcomes were, were grossly abnormal. And so the question is, how far short of a complete psychosocial deprivation, maybe rearing a child you know, in an Eastern European orphanage where they have you know, no caregiving, no touch, no, you know, just some food and, and, and not any kind of worst reasonable, case the worst case scenario. And we've known for a century what that does. So the question is, is there a subtler version of that that does the same sort of damage? And it's no surprise, as Nancy's alluding to, that yes, it does. The question is, how does it do that? And is there, are there really smart, strategic ways to offset those kinds of risks for children you know, who are liable to go through that? And I think one of the, one of the issues, to, to the, one of the ways to think about toxic stress is to think about how much stress for an individual child, and it varies for different children, is enough to overwhelm that child's coping mechanism, the way in which that child's brain and body uh, manages those kinds of environmental stimuli. Uh, and once, that, once you cross that threshold, then what happens is, is rather than stress building you up, making you stronger, it starts to break you down in various ways. And people are studying this and finding the traces of that. So figuring out which children can tolerate which stressors and how to protect the ones that are most liable to those stressors I think are re really an important frontier for helping children who are at these kinds of risks.